Today is the 3rd of April 2019. My name as always is Ray. Welcome to Walking the Way. I want to say thank you to everyone for listening in as we continue to explore, <coughs> excuse me, as we continue to explore what it means to have a regular rhythm of worship. And if you're joining us for the very first time, allow me to explain that each episode follows a really simple pattern of prayer, scripture, and music. So having explained how it all works, let's get going with today's episode of Walking the Way. And we begin with our opening prayer, so let's pray, shall we? Lord, only the hungry search for bread. Only the thirsty look for water. So today let this be a place for those who are hungry and thirsty in spirit. Only those who ache for meaning will pursue it, Lord, and only those who yearn for a deeper life will seek it. So let this be a place for those who ache and yearn for something more. Let us come here today with our hunger and our thirst our unsatisfied longings, our heartfelt yearnings, and let the God of life satisfy our souls. Amen. We're going to have our first piece of music just to give us some time to center our thoughts on God. And after that, we're going to get into our Bible readings. And in our Bible readings today, we read about the 12 spies that go out for Israel. Sorry, I'll put my teeth back in and try that again. We read about the 12 spies that go out for Israel. And Jesus talks about the cost of discipleship. And we'll see you on the other side. Let's ask God to speak to us today as we open up his word. Father, we read about people who rebelled today, Lord. And we ask today, Father, that we are not that type of people. So use your word today, Lord, to show us exactly how you want us to be, how to step out in faith, and how to count the cost. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And our Bible readings today are taken from the Good News Translation, and we begin with Numbers 13. The Lord said to Moses, Choose one of the leaders from each of the twelve tribes, and send them as spies to explore the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the Israelites. Moses obeyed, and from the wilderness of Paran he sent out leaders as follows. From Reuben, Shammua, son of Zakur, From Simeon, Shaphat, son of Hori. Judah. Caleb, son of Jephunneh, Issachar, Igel, son of Joseph, Ephraim, Hosea, son of Nun, Benjamin, Palti, son of Raphu, Zebulun, Gadiel, son of Sodi, Manasseh, Gadi, son of Susi, Dan, Amiel, son of Gemeli, Asher, Setha, son of Michael, Naphtali, Nabi, son of Oshi, 
Gad, Geel, son of Maki. These are the spies Moses sent out to explore the land. He changed the name of Hashir, son of Nun, to Joshua. When Moses sent them out, he said to them, Go north from here into the southern part of the land of Canaan, and then on into the hill country. Find out what kind of country it is, how many people live there, how strong they are. Find out whether the land is good or bad, or whether the people live in open towns or in fortified cities. Find out whether the soil is fertile, and whether the land is wooded. And be sure to bring back some of the fruit that grows there. It was the season where grapes were beginning to ripen. So the men went north, and explored the land from the wilderness of Zin in the south, all the way to Rohab, near Hamath Pass in the north. They went first into the southern part of the land and came to Hebron, where the clans of Ahiman, Sheshai, and Talmai, the descendants of the giants called Anakin, lived. Hebron was founded seven years before Zoan in Egypt. They came to Eskel Valley, and there they cut off a branch that had one bunch of grapes on it so heavy that it took two men to carry it on a pole between them. They also brought back some pomegranates and figs. That place was called Eskel Valley because of the bunch of grapes the Israelites cut off there. After exploring the land for forty days, the spies returned to Moses, Aaron, and the whole community of Israel at Kadesh, in the wilderness of Paran. They reported what they had seen, and showed them the fruit they had bought. They told Moses, We explored a land, and found it to be rich and fertile, and here is some of the fruit. But the people who live there are powerful, and their cities are very large and well forfeited. Even worse, we saw descendants of the giants there. Amalekites lived in the southern part of the land, Hittites. Jebusites and Amorites lived in the hill country, and Canaanites lived by the Mediterranean Sea and along the Jordan River. Caleb silenced the people who were complaining against Moses and said, We should attack now and take the land. We are strong enough to conquer it. But the men who had gone with Caleb said, No, we are not strong enough to attack them. The people there are more powerful than we are. So they spread a false report among the Israelites about the land they had explored. They said, That land doesn't even produce enough to feed the people who live there. Everyone we saw was very tall, and we even saw giants there, the descendants of Anak. We felt as small as grasshoppers, and this is how we must have looked to them. All night long the people cried out in distress. They complained against Moses and Aaron and said, It would have been better to have died in Egypt or even here in the wilderness. Why is the Lord taking us into that land? We will be killed in battle, and our wives and children will be captured. Wouldn't it be better to go back to Egypt? So they said to one another, Let's choose a leader and go back to Egypt. Then Moses and Aaron bowed to the ground in front of all the people, and Joshua son of Nun and Caleb son of Jephunneh, two of the spies, tore their clothes in sorrow, and said to the people, The land we explored is an excellent land. If the Lord is pleased with us, he will take us there, and give us that rich and fertile land. Do not rebel against the Lord, and don't be afraid of the people who live there. We will conquer them easily, The Lord is with us and has defeated the gods who protected them, so don't be afraid. The whole community was threatening to stone them to death. But suddenly the people saw the dazzling light of the Lord's presence appear over the tent. The Lord said to Moses, How much longer will these people reject me? How much longer will they refuse to trust in me, even though I have performed so many miracles among them? I will send an epidemic and destroy them but I will make you the father of a nation that is larger and more powerful than they are. But Moses said to the Lord, You brought these people out of Egypt by your power. When the Egyptians hear what you've done to your people, they will tell it to the people who live in this land. These people have already heard that you, Lord, are with us, that you appear in plain sight when your cloud stops over us, and that you go before us in a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Now, If you kill all your people, the nations who have heard of your fame will say that you killed your people in the wilderness because you were not able to bring them into the land you promised to give them. So now, Lord, I pray, show us your power and do what you promised when you said, I, the Lord, am not easily angered and I show great love and faithfulness and forgive sin and rebellion. Yet I will not fail to punish children and grandchildren to the third and fourth generation for the sin of their parents. And now, Lord, According to the greatness of your unchanging love, forgive, I pray, the sin of these people, just as you've forgiven them ever since they left Egypt. The Lord answered, I will forgive them as you have asked, but I promise that as surely as I live and as surely as my presence fill the earth, 
None of these people will live to enter that land. They have seen the dazzling light of my presence and the miracles that I performed in Egypt and in the wilderness. But they have tried my patience over and over again and refused to obey me. They will never enter the land that I promised their ancestors. None of them who have rejected me will ever enter it. But because my servant Caleb has a different attitude and has remained loyal to me, I will bring him into the land which he explored, and his descendants will possess the land, in whose valleys the Amalekites and the Canaanites now live. Turn back tomorrow, and go into the wilderness in the direction of the Gulf of Aqaba. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, How much longer are these wicked people going to complain against me? I've heard enough of these complaints, now give them this answer. I swear that as surely as I live, I will do to you just what you have asked. I, the Lord, have spoken. You will die, and your corpses will be scattered across this wilderness. Because you have complained against me, none of you over twenty years of age will enter the land. I promise to let you live there, but none of you will except Caleb and Joshua. You said that your children would be captured, but I will bring them into the land that you rejected, and it will be their home. You will die here in the wilderness. Your children will wander in the wilderness for forty years, suffering for your unfaithfulness, until the last one of you dies. You will suffer the consequence of your sin for forty years, one year for each of the forty days you spent exploring the land. You will know what it means to have me against you. I swear that I will do this to you wicked people who have gathered together against me. Here in the wilderness every one of you will die. I, the Lord, have spoken. The men Moses had sent to explore the land brought back a false report which caused the people to complain against the Lord. And so the Lord struck them with the disease and they died. Of the twelve spies, only Joshua and Caleb survived. When Moses told the Israelites what the Lord had said, they mourned bitterly. Early the next morning they started out to invade the hill country, saying, Now we are ready to go to the place that the Lord has told us about. We admit that we have sinned. But Moses said, Then why are you disobeying the Lord now? You will not succeed. Don't go. The Lord is not with you, and your enemies will defeat you. When you face the Amalekites and the Canaanites, you will die in battle. The Lord will not be with you because you have refused to follow him. Yet they still dared to go up into the hill country, even though neither the Lord's covenant box nor Moses left the camp. Then the Amalekites and the Canaanites who lived there attacked and defeated them, and pursued them as far as Homer. Luke 14 One Sabbath, Jesus went to eat a meal at the home of one of the leading Pharisees, and people were watching Jesus closely. A man whose legs and arms were swollen came to Jesus, and Jesus spoke up and asked the teachers of the law and Pharisees, Does our law allow healing on the Sabbath or not? But they would not say a thing. Jesus took the man, healed him, and sent him away. Then he said to them, If any of you had a child or an ox that happened to have fallen into a well on a Sabbath, Would you not pull it out at once on the Sabbath itself? But they were not able to answer him about this. Jesus noticed how some of the guests were choosing the best places, so he told this parable of all of them. When someone invites you to a wedding feast, do not sit down in the best place. It could happen that someone more important than you has been invited, and your host, who invited you both, will have to come to you and say, Let him have this place. Then you would be embarrassed and have to sit in the lowest place. Instead, When you are invited, go and sit in the lowest place, so that your host will come to you and say, Come on up, my friend, to a better place. This will bring you honor in the presence of all the other guests. For those who make themselves great will be humble, and those who humble themselves will be made great. Then Jesus said to his host, When you give a lunch or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or your rich neighbors, for they will invite you back, and in this way you will be paid for what you did. When you give a feast, invite the poor the crippled, the lame, and the blind. And you will be blessed because they are not able to pay you back. God will repay you on the day the good people rise from dead. When one of the guests sitting at the table heard this, he said to Jesus, How happy are those who sit down at the feast in the kingdom of God? Jesus said to him, There was once a man who was having a great feast to which he invited many people. When it was time for his feast, he sent his servants to tell his guests, Come. Everything is ready. But they all began, one after another, to make excuses. The first told his servant, I have bought a field. I must go look after it. Please accept my apologies. The other one said, I have bought five pairs of oxen, and I am on my way to try them out. Please accept my apologies. 
Another one said, I've just gotten married, and for that reason I cannot come. The servant went back and told all of this to his master. The master was furious and said to his servant, Hurry out into the streets and alleys of the town and bring back the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. Soon the servant said, Your order has been carried out, sir, but there is room for more. So the master said to the servant, Go out to the country roads and lanes and make everyone come in so that my house will be full. I tell you all that none of those who were invited will taste my dinner. Once when large crowds of people were going along with Jesus, he turned and said to them, Those who come to me cannot be my disciples unless they love me more than they love father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, and themselves as well. Those who do not carry their own cross and come after me cannot be my disciples. If one of you is planning to build a tower, you sit down first and figure out what it will cost, to see if you have enough money to finish the job. If you don't, you'll not be able to finish the tower after laying the foundations, and all who see what happened will make fun of you. You begin to build but can't finish the job, they will say. If a king goes out with 10,000 men to fight another king who comes against him with 20,000 men, he will sit down first and decide if he is strong enough to face that other king. If he isn't, he will send messengers to meet the other king to ask for terms of peace while he is still a long way off. In the same way, concluded Jesus, none of you can be my disciple unless you give up everything you have. Salt is good, but if it loses its saltiness, there is no way to make it salty again. It is no good for the soil or for the manure pile. It is thrown away. Listen then if you have ears. Psalm 143 Lord, hear my prayer. In your righteousness listen to my plea. Answer me in your faithfulness. Don't put me, your servant, on trial. No one is innocent in your sight. My enemies have hunted me down and completely defeated me. They have put me in a dark prison, and I am like those who died long ago. So I am ready to give up. I am in deep despair. I remember the days gone by. I think about all that you have done. I bring to mind all your deeds. I lift up my hands to you in prayer. Like dry ground, my soul is thirsty for you. Answer me now, Lord. I have lost all hope. Don't hide yourself from me, or I will be among those who go down to the world of the dead. Remind me each morning of your constant love, for I put my trust in you. My prayer goes up to you. Show me the way I should go. I go to you for protection, Lord. Rescue me from my enemies. You are my God. Teach me to do your will. Be good to me and guide me on a safe path. Rescue me, Lord, as you have promised. In your goodness, save me from my troubles. Because of your love for me, kill my enemies and destroy my oppressors, for I am your servant. We're going to have our second piece of music just to give us some time to think about the bits of scripture that have caught our attention. And after the music, we're going to say our prayers for the day and the time of the year.
Before we say our prayers for today, just a reminder that if you'd like us to pray with you, drop us a line through the usual channels and check the show notes for the contact details, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and email. Let's pray, shall we? All that I am, all that I do, all whom I shall meet this day, I offer to you now, God. Amen. And our prayer for the time of the year. Loving and merciful God, I am so aware of my sins and weaknesses. But as painfully aware of my faults as I am, let me also remember your tender love, your gentle and limitless forgiveness. I come before you filled with pain and guilt, but look into your eyes and see the forgiving love I so long for my life. Help me to forgive the same way. Lord, teach me to love as you love. Amen. And we say together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us, now and forevermore. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. You've been listening to Walking the Way, the podcast based on the book This Day, A Wesleyan Way of Prayer, by Lawrence Hoss Dukey, published by Abingdon Press. All of the details for today's show can be found in the show notes, including the scripture passages and credits for any and all prayers. If you want to partner with Walking the Way, please head to www.givesendgo.com forward slash walking the way. And if you want any more information about the podcast or me, please head to rayborrett.co.uk and you can find me on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. And don't forget, you can also listen to Walking the Way on TuneIn and YouTube. My name is Ray. And so until next time, I'll be here waiting as we continue walking the way.